Hi guys, in this video we are going to briefly discuss the development and application of force during the phases of sprinting. In the following video, we will explore some possible exercises that may assist in improving the force or strength qualities that underpin successful performance during these phases. But to understand these demands, we must first identify the three phases of sprinting. The first phase is the start or early acceleration phase, typically finishing around 5 metres from the start line. The second phase is the late acceleration phase, where the athlete will continue to accelerate typically to around 30 metres. However, better sprinters will accelerate for a longer period of time. The final phase is the max velocity phase. In this phase, the athlete achieves peak velocity with the aim to maintain or stay as close to peak velocity till the end of the race. But what are the strength qualities that underpin successful performance during these phases? Well, let's begin with the start phase. The athlete must first overcome inertia. To do this successfully, the athlete must possess good explosive strength or the ability to rapidly produce concentric force without a counter movement. This force should be applied into the ground in mostly the horizontal direction or more simply backwards so that it propels the athlete forward. Because of the start position, ground contact time during this phase is at its greatest. But as the athlete gains momentum, this ground contact time will be reduced. As the athlete drives out of this initial phase, they enter the late acceleration phase. In this phase, the athlete continues to drive their feet into the ground, accelerating their body forward. Ground contact time is reduced from the initial phase, with force being applied to the ground primarily in the horizontal direction. Given the eccentric demand of this phase, the athlete must possess good reactive strength as a need to rapidly produce force following an eccentric contraction is required to continue accelerating. As the athlete enters the max velocity phase, ground contact time is now at its lowest. Because of this, force must be developed rapidly as there is very little time for the athlete to apply this force to the ground. This type of strength is known as speed strength or power, with a focus put on the velocity of the movement. Given the reactive nature of this movement, power should be developed reactively. Research suggests that both the vertical and horizontal ground reaction force are important to successful performance during this phase. So exercises that target both vertical and horizontal force production should be utilized. When we look at these demands in relation to the force velocity curve, we can see that the start phase lays to the left of this curve. As we progress into the late acceleration phase, there is a shift to the right, with both velocity and force production now becoming more important. As we enter the max velocity phase, there is a further shift to the right, where velocity becomes more important to successful performance. This highlights the need to use exercises that fall along the entire spectrum of the force velocity curve when training to improve sprint performance. Stay tuned for the second installment of this video where we will discuss some exercises that may improve sprint performance during these phases. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.